Hey, hey y'all, let me wait for you guys to get on. Okay, we're live, we're live. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have an amazing conversation today. Okay, amazing training today. So I'm excited for you guys to come on in, come on in, okay? Hopefully I'm in the right group. <laughs> Just trying to drink some tea before I get started, okay. So hey, somebody's in, finally. Yay, okay, hey, hey, hey. If you are watching, put a one or a live, a hashtag live in the chat. Let me see if it wants to work today because you know sometimes the chat works, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works in the middle of the live, of the video training, but we're gonna, we're gonna roll with it, okay? I don't understand, it only does that in this group. I don't get it, but, because on my Facebook page, it does not do that on live. So if you're watching me, put hi, say one, but anyway, we are now at 200, over 200 members. We're now at 210. Like we grew so fast in like just a few days and that is just so, so amazing. So yay, we're over 200 members now. Um, this group has only been open for a couple months. You know, I've had Facebook groups before, but I've closed them down. But this particular group has only been open for a couple months, which is crazy that we now have over 200 members, okay? However, I would like for, you know, us to be a little bit more active in a group because like it does help the algorithm and there's so many people in the group that's literally joined and have not even, you know, commented, liked anything, didn't have not watched the a video training, nothing. Like, it's like, what's the point of you being here, okay? So if you're gonna be in the group, like, be active in the group, okay? Because I, I, I really don't wanna delete people, but I have to because the it ruins the algorithm when you have a whole bunch of non-active members, okay? So, you know, if you came in here and you, you know, want to learn, ways to heal your fibroids, to shrink your fibroids, then actually participate in, you know, watch the, the video trainings, actually participate in whatever discussions we're having, whatever, you know what I mean? If you, if you were not doing any topics that you don't, that, um, that you want to learn more about, then let me know. Like say, I want to learn more about this and now maybe I'll do a poll to see if other women want to learn about that as well in the group because I don't want to do a video training if only one person wants to see it. That don't make no sense. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> Anyway, so just be more active in the group if you can, okay? I appreciate that. Just so we can get, you know, this group a little popping a little bit. And I want it to be more interactive and more people, you know, post. If you want to post, post. You know what I mean? Not just me posting. That's boring. Okay, but anyway, um, so as you guys know, the replays for the, every video training is only in the group for 24 hours. And then we take it down, put it on, on the site, okay? So there will only be, this, this video will only be in the group for 24 hours, okay? So have 24 hours to watch the whole thing for people that's gonna watch on the replay. So if you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay, okay? But anyway, um, so also I wanna say this, we do have a workshop coming up next week, okay? A lot of you guys have signed up, so I'm so excited on resetting your hormones on literally a three-day workshop on how to restore hormonal balance into your body, okay? It's gonna be from the 24th through the 26th, and we're gonna have it on Zoom. Um, from 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So if you have not signed up, go ahead and sign up. It is only $44, and it is all about going to teach you how to restore that balance back into your body, which is so important when we're talking about any reproductive health issue or healing any excuse me, reproductive health issue. You got to restore balance back into your body because, like I said, this is what causes these reproductive health issues, these hormonal imbalances that we don't pick up on when it happens. I'm going to teach you guys also how to pick up on when your body's off so it doesn't you know, it doesn't lead to anything else like, you know, five boys or, you know, it doesn't lead to anything serious. So we're going to talk about that. It's going to be a very informative workshop. It's going to be amazing. So if you have not signed up, go ahead and sign up because seats are filling up, y'all. Okay. So, and also we're going to have Q&A on all that great stuff. Okay. So now let's get to our video training, how to prevent fibroids from growing back. Okay. How to prevent fibroids from growing back. This is going to be a very important discussion for ladies that have fibroids or even for ladies that's had fibroids, maybe had surgery, maybe ladies that shrunk their fibroids. Um, this is going to be an important discussion because one thing about fibroids, they will come back if you're not consistent, right? If you're not, like I said, changing your lifestyle. If you had surgery and you think that's it, no, it don't work like that. Unfortunately, if you had myomectomy to remove your fibroids, which is a surgery to remove your fibroids, and you think that you're you're in the clear for fibroids forever, no. If you had the UFE procedure or any type of fibroid procedure to get rid of fibroids and you think that they're not going to grow back, that is not true. Sometimes doctors will say, oh, um, you know, they may grow back before 
but you know, before uh, menopause, but by the time they're in menopause, they're gonna shrink on their own and that's not true. That's not true because there's plenty of women in menopause or in their 50s dealing with heavy bleeding and fibroids, plenty of them. Trust me, I know, okay? So, as somebody that's literally had fibroids twice, not once, but twice, you know, I know like, you know, how important it is to make sure that you don't, because these things come back, you to make sure that you are, like I said, implementing lifestyle changes so they don't do not come back okay if you don't know my story i've had it i've had five boys this was almost a decade ago i got five boys for the first time had the surgery i regret that i don't and I, that's why i don't recommend myomectomy second time around i ended up shrinking them on my own which is what i should have done in the first place okay but did not know all the information that i know now okay but anyway we're gonna get to that so it takes a lot to get rid of fibroids. So the last thing, whether you're doing it through surgery, whether you're doing it from UV, UFE, whether you're doing it from, um, um, you know, shrinking them on your own, it does take a lot to get rid of this because we know surgery is very, you know, the fibroid, the myomectomy is a lot, okay? <laughs> it's a very painful surgery and it's like a lot of healing goes along with the after, after the fact. So it takes a lot when you're dealing with, um, when you're getting rid of these tumors in your uterus. So you don't want them to grow back. There's women that's literally had them two, three, four, you don't want them to grow back. So that's why I say I had to do this live. And this is one of the, this is also a live that you guys wanted to see. So in case you did not know, about 90% of women, black women will get fibroids before the age of 50, okay? It is estimated about 90% of black, which is a lot. So we're dealing with, in the black community, a fibroid epidemic, okay? And that's why I'm happy that more and more men are also learning more about fibroids because, you know, it also impacts, like this, fibroids does, will impact your relationships as well, especially if the symptoms are really bad and they're impacting your everyday life. You know, whoever you're in a relationship with, they're going to have to deal with that too. So, um, or if you're married to, so I'm happy more and more men are learning about them, okay? So in case you guys aren't familiar with me, in case you guys are new to the group, hi and welcome, because I see people coming in, even though I cannot see the comments. But hi and welcome, my name is Sasha Rosa, okay? And I'm a holistic woman wellness coach. What I do is I help women who are dealing with womb health issues. I help them engage in everyday healthy habits in order to heal, okay? In order to heal their bodies, in order to heal their wombs, okay? Because everything's connected, and I teach them how to utilize food is medicine, you know, so how to utilize holistic methods in order to heal their wombs, okay? So I'm all about holistic health over here, okay? And I've helped many women shrink their fibroids, get rid of PCOS, get rid of cysts, get shrink their endometrio endometriomas, the list goes on. And also I've helped women, you know, be able to get pregnant. I've helped four women so far be able to overcome infertility and regulate their cycles and, you know, lose significant amounts of weight. The list goes on. So, yeah, so when it comes to fibroids, it's very common. When it comes to fibroids, are very common, unfortunately. You know, in the black community, especially among black women, among all women, really, because it is estimated about 70% of women will get fibroids before the age of 50, okay? So a lot of women have no clue how to prevent these fibroids. They have no clue how to prevent them, you know? Um, and they think that they have no clue how to get rid of them, you know, using holistic methods. They, most women don't even think you can get rid of fibroids or shrink your fibroids using holistic methods, okay? So most of the treatment options available for fibroids are techniques that's going to help you just manage the symptoms. And I tell you guys all the time, do not settle for just managing the symptoms. You want to get to the root cause of the issue. So we don't have these things continuously reoccur, okay? Or like I said, um, manifest into another estrogen dominant um, health issue condition okay that's even worse okay it's so important for you to get to the root cause of why you develop these fibroids where you know what i mean what what triggered them you know and everybody is different for everybody it may be it may be stress for one person maybe a horrible eating habits for one person and maybe you know nutrient deficient nutrient deficiency for another person everybody's different reasons you know and usually when i'm talking to people like on my consultation calls like i pull them out of them why they develop the fibroids okay okay so you got it before you know how to prevent them from coming back you got to understand why they developed in your body for the for, for, in the first place. Fibroids, you did not get fibroids for no reason, okay? A lot of people, you didn't just wake up and then fibroids was there for no reason. What, like, what happened? And, you, and sometimes people can, can really go back into their lives and see when these fibroids, like, occurred or when they started getting really bad. And they can say, okay, maybe I had a divorce. It was, you know, a highly stressful time. Maybe that was a period I wasn't taking care of myself. So, 
You know what I mean? It's you. You gotta, like I said, you gotta. In order to know how to prevent it from coming back, you gotta know where it came, like why it developed in your body in the first place. Okay, so we can, like I said, we can know how to navigate going forward, right? So uterine fibroids are non-cancerous tumors that develop in or around the uterus, and they're basically an accumulation of toxins. There's stagnant lymphatic mucus in the body, and what it's doing, the reason why it developed is because literally it's trying to protect your body from the toxicity in your body, okay? So they develop into tumors, okay? And they can wreak a lot of havoc in your body, right? So um, it's in a, it, in a way, your body's trying to protect itself because you know if you develop fibers, you know your body is, like I said, you're dealing with hormonal imbalances. You're dealing with um, lots of toxicity in the body, okay? That we have to get rid of. We have to start to detox out. Okay, so it is the most, unfortunately, the most common pelvic tumor in women is fibroids. It's very, like I said, it's very, very common. It's one of the top reasons why women undergo having hysterectomies, okay? Most women end up having hysterectomies due to, fib due to fibroids or heavy bleeding or both, okay? So, but, um, and a lot of women have fibroids and have, a lot, there's still a good number of women that have fibroids that have no clue, even though they said about... From the ages 25 to 35, about 65% of black women in that age range has fibroids. But just think about how many don't have them and don't know. So I think that number is actually higher than 65% because here's the thing. Most women don't know until they've had an ultrasound that they have fibroids, right? Or until they had like an MRI or something, you know what I mean? They're not going to know that they had fibroids. They can't just look at somebody until they have fibroids, you know? Um, so it's it's... So a lot of women don't understand until they don't know that they have fibroids until like, let's say they're trying to conceive and then it's not happening. And then maybe they go get an examination and the doctor will order, um, order ultrasound to see what's going, up, going on in there. And um, they'll find out they have fibroids. Or sometimes women don't find out until they've, um, they've um, under, until they, they requested like an ultrasound or a doctor may be thinking, okay, they have symptoms. Let's, let's administer an ultrasound. Or let's, you know, give this person an ultrasound, and that's when they find out. Or they don't find out until they get pregnant, right? Because that's when you're doing the regular ultrasound when you get pregnant, right? But you do, that's very dangerous because, let me say something, fibroids can cause, can cause a lot of, even without pregnancy, they cause a lot of harm. So just imagine even within pregnancy, you know? Um, they could do a lot of damage, right? And we want to get rid of these things and shrink them before if we can help it before getting pregnant. Not saying that you cannot be pregnant with fibroids, as many women have had healthy pregnancy without, without fibroids, but I would not recommend it. I would say really work on shrinking your fibroids before getting pregnant, right? Getting them at least to a small size because they tend to grow in pregnancy because of the increase in estrogen. And you don't want you know, the fetus to be competing with space with the fibroids. Like it's, it can be, it can be really, it could be very detrimental, you know, so we don't want that, okay? So, um, you know, you, women are so out of touch with their bodies these days. So they don't even, a lot of women don't understand when something's off, when their hormones are off, when their hormones are out of whack. We're supposed to, for the most part, feel that. But women are so out of touch with their bodies these days. They don't understand when something's off. A lot of women don't even understand their, really, their hormones, their hormones, how it works. They don't understand it. That's why I'm having this workshop, because I'm like, uh-uh, we got to do something about this, right? So... What are a couple of symptoms that come along with fibroids? And I want to I want to add this in because some people may not know. Some people may be watching this and not maybe think they have fibroids, but maybe you know what I mean. They don't know, so that's why I have to add in the symptoms. So, so some of you guys, this is maybe repetitive, but this is something I have to add in. So things like constipation, bloating, you know, frequent urination, always having to use the bathroom, heavy bleeding. Erica, yes, I'm finally I'm seeing the comments. Hey, it always does that right in the middle. Hey, Erica, heavy bleeding is definitely one. Anemia. Pain in the pelvic, okay? Irregular periods, exactly. Bloating, water retention. Um, prolonged menstrual cycles that's longer than four days, okay? Passing clots during your cycle, okay? Yeast, when yeast infections and BV, because when you're, when you're dealing with fibroids, when you're dealing with, with toxicity in the body, you're more prone to yeast infections, you're more prone to BV, you're more prone to UV, UTIs. And we all know that that stuff is not fun, okay? So, and I tell people that's not normal. When we know that, that we know that there's toxicity in the body when we're dealing with these um, these infections, okay? So um, pain during sex, infertility, you could also, infertility depending on the location of the fibroid, you, irregular cycles, like um, Erica said, maybe sometimes they'll have two cycles in a month or it'll be, be something weird like that, or 10 day cycles, which is way too long to be bleeding, 
or even bleeding in between your cycles. That happens a lot. Bleeding during our relation, spotting during our relation is very common with people that have fibroids or even um, anemia too as well because if you have heavy bleeding, more than likely you're going to be anemic, more than likely, okay? So how can we, how to prevent fibroids from growing back, okay? Sorry, y'all. So first, like I said, you need to understand where it came from. You need to understand why did it develop? You gotta, like, you cannot heal, you cannot prevent them until you understand that, understand that. So I want all of you guys to really sit down and think about this. You know, if you have five boys, or if you had five boys in the past, think about where did this fight, where did it come from? Was it stress? Was it your diet? Okay. Were you eating your feelings instead of dealing with your feelings, right? Instead of processing your feelings, were you eating them, your feelings, right? You know, was it, was it, was it you neglecting yourself? Okay, that's very common with women. Was it you not taking care of yourself? Was it you not listening to your body? Was it you just being on autopilot and just work, caring about work and taking care of everybody else but not taking care of yourself? Okay, just living your life on autopilot, which is so dangerous, especially for women. Um, was it you tuning in more to your masculine energy and not your feminine energy? Okay, that's another thing. With masculine energy is more doing, doing, doing and less being, right? Was it you... You know, was it you um, in this world just existing and not actually, you know, living, not really living? You know, were you on birth control? That's a big one. Were you on birth Did you have a poor diet? Were you eating a diet of mostly processed foods? Okay. Um, did you, did you used to have hair relaxers? Did you used to, um, I know I did before when I was a kid. Um, also, also one thing, did you, um, do, are you overweight? Because that, that's another thing, because that increases your hormone levels. Okay. Did you, was there a period of time that you gained a lot of weight due to the where your fibroids grew, okay? Because like I said, all, really think and sit down and think about these things. Like, you know, some of these questions, like, you know, was it, were you stressed out? There was a period of a time where you were heavily, like, you know, that these fibroids developed that you were stressed out. Sometimes people might say, okay, I had a divorce uh, five years ago. That was when I found out I had five boys. That was the same time I found out, found out um, or maybe there was a death in the family, something, you know, or maybe that was just a period of time I was in a toxic work environment. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was just literally working to death and not really, um, not really, like I said, just focusing on work and making money and that's it and taking care of everything else and taking care of everybody else and maybe you just staying over time. Who knows? You got to know where they come from in order to prevent them from coming back. Okay, so maybe you have to um, write it down and really think when when was it at its worst? When did it really start growing? That's what I had to do. Some of these things that I just named were me. That's why I developed fibers and that's why they grew, you know, to be the size they were. Because like I said, I, for years I was engaging in unhealthy habits and a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so um, in order to prevent your fibers from growing back, number one, you got to detach from the old you. You got to, because in order to know where you're going, you got to know what happened that, what happened that I developed the, these tumors in my uterus? Like, what was it, right? In order for you to detach from that person, that person that developed the fibroids in their womb, you got to, like I said, you got to know what caused them, right? You got to know, okay, because we don't want, we don't want to deal with, we don't want that life anymore, right? We want to, we want to shift into a new reality where we're fibroid free, where our hormones are balanced, right? So we have, we want to do the work to heal our bodies. So in order to do that, like I said, you got to know, okay, what were you doing wrong? Like what, what caused these things to develop? Okay. Because like I said, what each person is going to be different. Okay. So you have to now detach from that person and now put in place healthy habits. Okay. We got to detach from all those unhealth, unhealthy habits that we had before. And you have to start start shedding those bad habits one by one and developing new habits, replacing them with new habits. Very, very important, okay? So I'm going to go over some of these habits that you want to start developing, okay? I've read off some that you want to start shedding. You Now I'm going to, you know, to help you really sustain a fibroid-free life, a fibroid-free womb, okay? Yes, exactly, Jessica. Thank you. So... First and foremost, you got to change your mindset. You got to change your mindset, okay? Um, and when I say this, a couple—I mean, a couple of things—you got to change your mindset in terms of 
Um, number one, people always have this mindset, you can't shrink your fibroids. All I can do is have surgery. You got to change that mindset, okay? You got to change, because how are you going to heal if you don't even believe in your body healing yourself? How are you going to heal? You don't even believe in yourself. You don't even believe in your body. Your body is very powerful. You don't even believe in it. So how is your body going to heal? Okay? The thoughts you think in your mind are very powerful. Okay? So... If you are all looking for a quick fix, what medication? I was on TikTok earlier on live. Somebody was like, what medication can I take for, to shrink my fibroids? None. None is going to work with shrinking your fibroids and actually lasting, okay? None. You have to do the work. So if you had that quick fix mentality, what herb can I take? Um, you know, and not really trying to, like I said, embark, like I said, shed your old habits. You just want to look for quick fixes then that's not, like I said, that, that's not sustainable. You're going to end up, they're going to end up growing back. Okay, so you got to change your mindset and shift out of that. You have, like I said, you have to shift out of that old you and really, and live a lifestyle that's going to be fibroid free. You got to shift out of those bad habits and stop looking for quick fixes. Stop thinking, what surgery can I do? What pill can I, like, no, you got to, what herb can I take? Have you done the work to shrink your fibroids? Okay, now also, you want to flood your diet with mostly unprocessed foods, okay? Because your diet really does matter a lot, okay? It's not the only thing that matters when you're shrinking five boys, but it has a big impact on your hormonal health, your diet, okay? So am I eating a diet that's gonna like, that's, that's toxic to my body, a bunch of, that's toxic to my organs, that's literally clogging up my organs so my body can't absorb nutrients, my body can't absorb iron, you know, I'm bleeding heavily every month, that's what, you know, if you're eating a bad diet, that's what's going to happen. And that's going to knock your hormones out of balance, okay? And we're really going to cover hormones in the three, my three-day workshop next week, Reset Your Hormones, how to reset those hormones, how to restore that balance back into your body next week on, in the um, workshop. So if you're not, if you have not signed up for the workshop, go ahead and sign up for that workshop, my three-day Resetting Your Hormones workshop, okay? If you have five boys, like infertility, PCOS, any type of hormonal imbalance, diabetes, you have to be there, okay? You want to be there at that workshop. It's going to be absolutely amazing, okay? So it's going to be from Tuesday to Thursday. It's going to be on Zoom, okay? And shout out to the ladies that have signed up. Excited about having you guys there, okay? So you want to flood your diet with nutrient-rich foods. Very, very, very important, okay? Very important to flood your body with nutrient-rich foods. Um, and less of that junk, less of the processed foods. Are you eating mostly out of a box, out of a can, are you eating, like I said, are you eating foods from, are you actually shopping in the produce section at all? Or are you just buying a couple of things and that's it and then buying mostly junk? So where are you doing your grocery shopping? Pay, pay attention to what you're consuming. It's very important to your hormone levels as well, okay? So you also want to start, like I said, you want to start dealing with traumas, okay? And I, and I want to say this because Everybody has trauma, right? Everybody has things that they've gone through that maybe have scarred them a bit, right? You got to start dealing with that stuff. Sometimes we suppress things that we've dealt with and, um, and think that it's not impacting us, but it is. And that's why a lot of times, sometimes these are, these are why five boys develop stress. The body, you know, the body keeps score, right? So if there's something in your life that, that's happened to you, that you went through in your past, you got you to gotta learn healthier ways to deal with that so whether that's therapy whether that's journaling you got to bring it to the forefront and release it and let it go okay whether it's anger pain you gotta let all that stuff go cannot harbor hostility cannot harbor hate can't harbor um anger because it eats away at your body it eats away at your soul and this is how and also it does impact your womb health and this is why a lot of women have developed fibroids because of this as well so anything that stresses you out or that stressed you out in the past, you got to bring it to the forefront, heal it, let it go. Okay, we're never going to be 100% healed, but you have to start start on your, you actually have to start trying at least, right? Have to start, like I said, um, releasing those things. And everybody has gone through trauma. Even the richest person in the world has gone through trauma, right? So we, you know, um, that's just, it just, things happen. Things happen. So we got to, like I said, we got to start learning how to deal with these things, Right? in better healthier ways and not just turning to food not just you know what i mean heart like holding it in not just working to death and not you know what i mean so you can't you you're not thinking about yourself and your problems that's not healthy ways of dealing with like i said trauma or hurt or pain or stress okay so also 
you want to eat a detoxifying diet. When we're down, you know, I talked about diet, but we want to eat hydrating foods, right? Diet is going to actually, like I said, release some of these toxins from our body. Fiber rich diet, very important, right? Nutrient rich diet is actually going to help you release some of the toxins, release, like eliminate um, some of the waste in your body. It's going to hydrate your body on a cellular level, hydrate your cells. If, we're, if our diet is filled with coffee and bagels and fast food and Starbucks, then how, and whatever people eat these days, then how is that going to be healing to our body and our organs? That's actually doing the opposite. This is how we feed fibers and cause them to grow and become out of the control. This is how we continuously get them back because we don't change our lifestyle, right? So very important. You want to, like I said, that's why I say you got to shed from your old self. It is a whole transformation. Like if if you if anybody's in here that's actually shrunk five boys and got rid of any health issue naturally, you know that literally you're not the same person you are today as you were back then when you got the health issue. You're a completely different person. You've evolved, okay, in, in a good way. So um, you want to detox regularly as well. Detox is so important, okay. If if you've had five boys before, if you have five boys now. We're dealing with a lot of toxicity in the body, so we got to detox. We got to start doing monthly detoxes, okay? Very important. Um, and start implementing fasting. Fasting is so healing to the body. Fasting will also help starve off those fibroids if you have them. Also help heal the body as well. So intermittent fasting is really good. It's not just good for weight loss. It's also good for healing, Okay. Fasting is amazing. And once you break your fast, breaking it with healthy foods and not breaking it with trash. When you break your fast, when you break your detox, okay? Break it, break it, what you break your fast or what you, you know, break your detox with matters. Cannot break it with junk food and think you're doing something, right? We have to replenish the body with nutrient-rich foods, with hydration, okay? Um, especially, well, just regardless, but especially if you're dealing with things like heavy bleeding, because you're losing a lot of nutrients, as, you know, as you bleed, you're losing a lot of iron. So you gotta replenish your body with that stuff. You cannot continuously eat junk and think that you know you're going to heal. You think you're going to get better and think that okay, there's a medication I could take that can save the day. That's not gonna happen. Okay, if that happened, then most women would not be dealing with these people that have health issues. Okay, so um, also this is a big one. You want to stay away from birth control. Okay. I'm gonna keep saying that. The other day on tick, well, on what was it? Yeah, on Instagram, somebody asked me, "Can you shrink your fibroids um, while on birth control?" And I said, "Hell no, hell no. How can you shrink your fibroids when you're feeding your body with synthetic, flooding your body with synthetic hormones? How? How? You're doing the opposite. You're feeding the fibroids. As a matter of fact, there's no way you can shrink your fibroids on birth control. Okay. So, and here's the thing: most women get on birth control to deal with the symptoms of fibroids, which is the wrong thing to do because doctors, for some reason, prescribe birth control with, when it comes to reproductive health issues, okay? And there was a hormone specialist that actually asked the doctor, why do they do that? And they said, well, it's protocol. That's just what we do. And, you know, and it's also, it's easier for them to just prescribe birth control than actually get to the underlying, the root cause because that's, helping you get to the root cause is going to take too much time. They don't have that, that type of time, right? So they just, okay, just put it on birth control. Here you go. Like, that's no. That's doing more damage, actually. That's feeding your fibroids, actually, okay? So if you're on birth control, get off birth control. Because that what's going to happen? They're going to reappear. If you got rid of them, they're going to reappear if you're on birth control. Say no to birth control, okay? Um, find healthier ways to, if you're using them for contraceptives, find healthier ways. Okay, um, they even have herbal blends that can prevent pregnancies. And I heard about neem oil. I have not tried it, but, you know, look for ways that's going to naturally help you. For people that's, you know, that's family planning and all that stuff, okay? Because um, people always ask me, well, what can I use if I'm, you know, don't want to have any more children? Uh, and I'm, like, married or whatever. So, um, um, you want to stay away from something that's going to, like, literally destroy your womb. And not just destroy your womb, destroy the health of your body. Okay, it's not worth it. The birth control is a no. I'm gonna keep saying it. Even the non-hormonal ones, even the copper IUDs, even the um, they even say copper IUD when the side effects is heavy bleeding. So you know it's 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 horrible for you. That's supposed to be the non-hormonal one I heard. 
The IUDs are hor even worse. The patches, I don't know if they have that anymore. The pills, all of them, all of it is worse. Okay, because I always get somebody to ask me, well, what about an IUD? What about this one? All of them, all of them are horrible. Okay. Um, also, you want to, and I talked about this a little bit before, you want to find healthier ways to manage stressful events, manage your stress and manage your mental health. Okay. This one is very important. Anything that's going to disrupt your hormones, you want to stay away from, okay? So just think about things. And how do we know that they're disrupting our hormones? We're going to talk about that in full at the three-day resetting your hormones workshop, okay? All the, excuse me, all the hormone disruptors, okay? We're going to talk about that. So make sure if you're not in the workshop, join the workshop. But I'm going to say this. We know birth control is a hormone disruptor, okay? We know, we know, um... Certain foods disrupt the hormones. We know that, um, I don't want to say, this one is controversial, so I'm going to say this one. This one I'm going to say for the workshop, but ladies, you you want to be at the workshop. IUDs can be accepted incorrectly. Also, that happened to one of my clients. That happened to one of my clients, and now she's literally, you know, finding ways to sue the hospital. Like, it's, it's, they can be inserted wrong, and that happens more often than you think. That happens more often than you think. Like, do some research on this, this birth control. I don't understand why we're still using it in 2023. I don't get it. All this information out there. Cleaning products, exactly. Using more natural cleaning products, okay? I use, I'm not perfect with the cleaning products, but when I, when I, I'm try, I try to use more healthier disinfectants, like, you know, 7th uh, seventh, seventh Generation has a brand. You know, if you can, more of the organic ones. Okay, when you do, when you're um, using cleaning products, I'm not perfect with those cleaning. I can't, you know, but even products that you put on your skin, I'm not perfect with that either. But I do use things like shea butter, hemp seed um, lotion, hemp seed oil lotion, or whatever. More so than don't jargons. Like there's so many hormone disruptors you want to stay away from. I just started using Everspring for cleaning. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm not I'm not the expert in the cleaning products, but I know that things that disrupt the hormones that you're literally injecting in your body. I'm going to leave that for the uh, workshop because it's very controversial. Okay, so if anything's messing with your cycle, if anything, and I'm going to teach you guys how to know when your, your hormones are off, right? Because we can really catch these hormonal balance very early when something's a little bit off, right? As women, our, our hormones fluctuate, and that's totally fine. But you don't want them to be, all, like, like, like I said, imbalanced. They still have to be in balance. And they have still have to be in balance, right? They still have to be in harmony, right? So when they're not... When they're just not all, all out of whack, that's when we start getting these health issues. That's when we start getting the heavy bleeding and the fibers and the PCOS and, you know, endometriosis. When it's consistently, you know, a lot of women go through years with hormonal imbalances and not picking up on them, not doing anything about them, thinking, oh, it's, just, it's normal. This is normal. No. And, not, and that's why it leads to more serious um, reproductive health issues or infertility you know, hormonal imbalance is one of the leading causes of infertility, okay? And um, so we have to really restore imbalance within our womb, within our body is so important. I cannot stress that enough, okay? So you want to be, like I said, it happened to me after my last child in 2009. So sorry about that, Jasmine. Yeah, that's very common when they insert the, the IUD wrong. We got to get off the birth control lady. I'm going to keep saying that. Oh, I know some people are tired of hearing me. But shout out to the ladies in the group that has gone off birth control recently. Because after hearing my video trainings, yes, after hearing my rants. <laughs> so I, 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 I can say even one womb by helping them get off birth control, then I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to keep ranting about it. <laughs> What kind of detox can we do? Great question, Elle. Okay, so we want to stick to natural detoxes. We don't want to buy these, these things on, at the store that says, oh, I'm going to detox you because we don't know the ingredients that they have in it. And they might be detoxing good bacteria from you as well. So what's a natural detox? Fruits and vegetables, okay? You know, having a week where you're just cleaning your body out, just eating fruits and vegetables, you know, what are your, you should be eating fruits and vegetables every single day. But, you know, having a week of, like, juicing and smoothies and fruits and vegetables, that's a great detox because guess what? You're going to be going to the bathroom a lot. And guess what? That's you detoxing up the waste from your body, right? Detoxing the waste. That's how we detox, right? So a lot of women ask me when they're detoxing, is this normal? Me going to the bathroom this many times? I'm like, yeah. Because you have a lot of backed up waste up in there that needs to come out, okay? That needs to come out in order for you to heal, in order for you to be in balance, right? So we're definitely, definitely off the birth control. Good, Erica. Yes, get off the birth control. 
get out of the birth control. So hopefully that helps. And if you have fibroids and you want, or you know that you're prone to fibroids, right? I know that I'm prone to fibroids, right? Had it twice. So, but been fibroid free for years now. Yay. So, um, I know that I'm not going to go back, ever go back to, okay, well, you know, I don't have fibroids now, so I can do what I want. I can go back to eating cookies and junk food and, you know, all this meat and there. No, absolutely not. So that's why I say lifestyle, okay? Shedding from your old self. Shedding that that me, that over, the person that was overweight, that was sick all the time, that was iron deficient, that was, and not doing nothing about it, is dead. She's gone. That's she's not coming back. I would you couldn't pay me enough money to go back to that, that person. Shedding your old self, you're evolving into a new you, letting go of, of you know that person and getting out of that mindset. I, I can't let this go. I can't, I can't let coffee go. I can't, you gotta get out of that mindset because that's, that's a mental thing. You gotta change your mindset. I'm trying to get everything together financially to work with you. My appointment yesterday, they tried to just hysterect me. Oh, we can't do hysterect me. Oh, heck no. Yes, Erica, cannot wait. Listen, I've had women work with me that's literally been considering a hysterectomy. I had a client 20, 2021. She worked with me. She was literally considering a hysterectomy. I said no. She joined my Toe Transformation program. And guess what? Now her fibroid shrunk. She had a very large fibroid. Her fibroid shrunk significantly. And she's like, I'm so happy I found you. Like, I know that this will be 100% gone. I know that her fibroids will be gone very soon. So I'm um, so and she also lost weight. She her fibroid symptoms are gone because she used to bleed so much. And I know how that feels like because that used to be me as well. Coffee free for 45 days. Yes, Erica. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, let's get off the coffee, ladies. Get up. Let's let's start drinking some herbal teas. Let's replace them with new habits. Let's replace these things with new habits. Herbal teas is great. Especially if you're iron deficient. Dandelion root tea, sarsaparilla, burdock, it's a natural detox. We gotta start, let's start thinking natural. Our grandparents, if you got, well, some of y'all got young grandparents, but, okay, for the ones that got older grandparents like myself, my grandparents are not here anymore, but for the ones that had older grandparents or even great-grandparents, whatever, they weren't dealing with, your, your great-grandmother, your grandmother probably had seven, eight, I know my, my grandmother, each had, one had eight kids, one had nine kids, she was not dealing with no fibroids, heavy bleeding. They were not dealing with that. That's not normal. And now every woman, almost every woman is dealing with that now. So what does that tell you? That's our lifestyle, right? And there's one thing I want to add. Um, coffee removal will be my stress. We got to work on it. I listen to what you're teaching us. Good job, Erica. I appreciate that. Coffee was hard. Like the, I like raspberry teas now. Great job. I had a laparoscopic myomectomy in December 20, 2021. Got an infection from, ooh, sorry. Ooh, sorry about that, L. Now I had two little ones that have grown back in a year. Yeah, they always grow back. And possibly a polyp. Um, my doctor wants me to do a surgery again. No, don't do it again. Again, my husband and I are trying to conceive. I really do not. Don't listen. Listen, don't under, and I've been through that too. Like I've been through, I had the surgery too. That was my biggest regret. And they grew back too. Do not, I'm telling you, do not have it again, especially if you want to conceive, because that's what you cause, you're going to cause scarring in your, um, in your tubes, in your uterus. And we don't want that. And blockages in your uterus. The more sur times you go under surgery, we want, you can heal your, your wound naturally. You can heal it naturally. Also, the polish, you can shrink the fibroids and shrink the polish nat naturally. Did you hear? I don't know if you, I know you're new to the group, but just, what was it? Was it last week? Last week, literally last week, there was a woman who literally was, she, 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 didn't, she didn't work with me personally, but she bought my video trainings. She was like following me for so long, following all my tips. Guess what? Literally within months, right? She, for a whole year, she was trying to get pregnant. For, she was considering IU, um, was, IVF. She was considering IVF. So guess what? She sent me a pregnancy, a copy, a, a screenshot of her pregnancy test. I posted it all over social media. I was like, yes. She said, she was like, I'm pregnant. And she said that I, when she went to the doctor, multiple fibroids were gone. She only had one small one left. One small fibroid left. Multiple fibroids were gone. Okay. So, and she, she's not in her 30s. She's in her 40s. Okay. So listen, never give up hope. You just got to do the work to heal yourself. Yep, scarring, that happened to me. Yes, Cammie, exactly. Hey, Cammie, yes, exactly. Scarring, that's what, and I had a whole video on my, even my YouTube video. It was called um, the, the cons, the bad signs of having a myomectomy that they don't tell you. That's what the scarring. 
So if we're going to have these multiple surgeries and we're causing scarring in the, in the uterus, that again can cause, um, you know, you to be infertile. Well, of course you can heal that too, but that, that again can cause, like I said, difficulty with you trying to conceive. Okay, I'm encouraged. Okay, L, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. So all everybody that's, de that's dealing with fibroids, dealing with PCOS, dealing with infertility, I think there's no hope. There's always hope, but we gotta do the work. Your body can heal anything, but you gotta get out of your body's way. You, 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 your body can heal anything. Do you, you know how powerful your body is? You know, when you break a bone, your body heals itself, right? When you cut yourself, your body heals itself. So you're telling me when you have tumors in your body, when you have hormonal imbalances that your body can't heal, that's BS. Your body can heal, your body is powerful, but you gotta get out of your body's way. You can't continue to, like I said, you know, pour in toxic things in it. How is it going to do its job? Your body, you gotta know when your body is starting to scream for help, like look, this is too much, like you're, you're killing me here, okay? You're killing me here, okay? You gotta know your body, okay? That's what we wanna teach in this, this workshop next week, Reset Your Hormones Workshop. We're gonna re reset our hormones for 2023. That's what I'm gonna teach you guys how to recognize when these hormonal imbalances are occurring. Hey, Nola. And we have to stop being lazy with our healing. Thank you, Cami. We gotta stop being lazy and letting these, and running to these doctors thinking they're going to heal us. They're not gonna heal you. These doctors are not going to heal you. They're just going to prescribe you something for the meantime. Okay, let's do a little surgery on her. And then she's going to be back within, you know, months or a year. And black women, and let me tell you something. When you have surgery that aggravates the, the, um, the, the, the area even more. So that sometimes they come back even worse when you have the surgery. After having surgery, they come, the fibers come back more aggressive. That's what happened to me. I was like, whoa, I didn't experience these symptoms before. Like, what the hell is this? Like... And it happens quick. And I was like, whoa. So I was like, oh, no, I'm not going through that. When I went through the first time, I'm not going through that again. I got to heal myself. So you, if I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? Somebody that was addicted to food, that was overweight, that was depressed. If I can do it, anybody can do it, okay? So I, don't, I want you guys to be encouraged. You can heal yourself. You're Like I said, you got to restore the balance back into your body, okay? Because guess what? If you, even if you don't, people that don't want to have children, if you continue to having these surgeries, then what? Because the same thing that caused fibroids can also cause other health, can also cause high blood pressure, diabetes, breast cancer. So you have to do the work, okay? Or you're going to be committed to a life of suffering. And I don't want that for you, okay? But you got to want yourself to heal. You got to want better for yourself, okay? Because I can't do the work for you. I can give you all the resources, all the information to heal though. Okay, and I can make it a lot easier for you, but I can't come into your body and do the work for you. Okay, so <sighs> say all that to say, <laughs> I'm out of breath now. I say all that to say, now I want, I want to talk about another thing. I want to talk about another thing. I want you guys, if when you do, when you want to prevent fibroids, I want you to do the best you can with staying out of toxic situations. Okay, because guess what? Even now, we can't avoid them 100%, I get it, but as much as you can, okay? So even things that stress you out, people that stress you, um, let's say toxic job environments. If you know, look, I've been at this job for three years and it's stressed me the hell out and it's, it's time to find a new job, okay? If you know you've been, um, you know, I don't talk about relationships here, but if you've been in a relationship and it's stressing you the hell out and it's not getting better, either we go to counseling or it's, you know, is it really worth it? You know, if you, especially if you're not married, okay? But if, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, stay out of, if you have a best friend that you've been friends with for 20 years, but you know she is stressing you the hell out, maybe it's time to say goodbye to that friend, okay? I mean, she's not trying to do better because she's going to drag you back. We're not, let's let go of things that stress, stress us out, okay? Let's let go. Information is information, physical. Exactly, Cami. Emotional or physical, exactly. So let me say something. When you are in toxic environments, like I said, it also causes inflammation in the body. So if you're dealing with that on a constant level, constant level, every single day, then guess what's going to happen, okay? So also, I want to talk about another thing. So stay out of toxic environments as much as you can. Sometimes we cannot, you know, like I said, there's certain like family members, you know, all that stuff. But if you can stay, you know, Create boundaries, healthy boundaries, okay? Don't let people have too much access, too many people have access to you. You know what I mean? Create healthy boundaries, you know? Um, it's very important. You gotta protect your peace, protect your well-being. As a woman, we have to be protective of our peace. We cannot be, oh, I wanna be everybody's caregiver. I wanna help everybody. 
you gotta help yourself first, okay? You gotta help yourself before you can help anybody. You cannot show up in the world as a good wife, as a good mother, as a good even co-worker. If you are half sick, if you're dealing with fibroids, be heavy, you're bleeding heavy, like you can't, like how? And I know because I was there. Like, how? How are you going to do that? If you're, you know, you got cramps, how are you going to show up in the world as, as you know, a good wife, mother? So that's why we got to start healing. We got to start restoring the balance. We got to start healing, okay? So um, I also want to talk about um, your self-expression, your creative outlets, which is very important as a woman to have that, okay? So you got to, like, a lot of women don't even know their purpose. They don't even understand their purpose in the world. Like, they don't know what they like. They just know, they don't know what their hobbies are. They just know work, kids. That's it. I'm like, what, like, what do you like to do? Like, do you like painting? You know, did that bring you joy maybe 10 years ago? Why not do that? Do you like to dance? Why, like, why? Why do you just, why do we get older? We just neglect our creative outlets. Do you like to sew? That's all that's been so important. So I love art therapy. Great. Exactly. Like, what do you enjoy? Find that, find your joy, ladies. Find your joy. Okay. Even, you know, you don't, it's, it, it, it could just be something you do on your own. It doesn't have to be something that makes money. It can be something that you do on your own. How do you express your creativity? We're creative beings as women, right? We, that, that feeds us, right? So you have to increase the joy in your life and find your joy. A lot of people don't even know their joy because they're operating on autopilot, work, bills, you know, cook, this, like clean. They're not, like, they're not, like I said, they don't understand like what, what brings you joy in life? Like what feeds your soul? Find that. It's so important, right? Are you living or are you existing? Okay. I care for my kids um, and my aging grandmother and it gets stressful. Um, so yeah, trying to find ways to delegate and hire help. Girl, hire help. Hire, outsource as much as you can um, so, so it won't be so much on you. That's so important. If you can hire help, hire help, okay? You know, transparency moment. I recently, you know, um, had my house clean for the first time. I was like, I didn't do this more often, you know? <laughs> you know? Because like I said, it, life can be stressful. We got a lot going on, okay? So hobby, yes. I just started salsa, a new hobby, great stress reliever. Yes, love it. Yes, salsa is fun. So true, yes, salsa. I love that. I love that, Nola. Yes. So um, find your joy. Find what you love. I had a friend who loved art and was so good at it, and she didn't do it for years. I'm like, girl, why? But, you know, I just got wrapped up in motherhood and life. Girl, if you don't do that art and paint, whatever, and now she's doing it, and it's like she's, she feels amazing. Like, you know what I mean? It really changed her, you know? Little things like that make such a big difference in your life, right? You know, it's not just life is not just about work and paying some bills, right, and taking care of everybody else. That's not what life is about, okay? So... It's very important. And also for ladies that are caregivers like Jasmine, right? You know, you cannot be a good caregiver if you're not taking care of yourself. You can't, like, how are you going to care for others when you're not caring for yourself? Like, if I'm an aging parent, I don't, I don't want a caregiver that's like, you know, if I'm an aging parent, I don't want my daughter to be like half sick and taking care of me. I'm like, well, you need to look like you need a caregiver, okay? I want somebody healthy taking care of me, right? That's that's, that's taking care of themselves as well because that's even going to make you feel bad, right? When somebody's not getting sleep, they're not, they're not pouring into themselves, they're not getting self-care, and they're taking care of you, that don't make sense. Take care of yourself first. I guess sit constantly. Oh, no. We got to change that, Jasmine. We need, you need, you need self-care. We need to start implementing more self-care practices. And when I talk about self-care, I'm going to talk about getting your nails done, even though that, that's fun too. But I'm going to talk about that. I'm talking about emotional self-care, mental health, taking care of your mental health, okay? If you got a book, you know, things like that. Really, you know, um, really finding time in your schedule just for you. I don't care how busy you are. Finding time in your schedule that's just for you, okay? I don't care if it's journaling, taking a bubble bath, but doing things that's going to help distress you and cater to you, okay? Um, very important. A lot of women have lost that joy in their life, that self-expression. They're just, like I said, existing. And as women, we're not meant to do that. We're meant to, like I said, be creative beings. So I want everybody that's watching this, what, like, number one, getting a life coach is awesome. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs>
Very true. Very true. Coaching is awesome. You know, whether it's a health coach, whether it's a life coach. Yes, I totally agree. But what I do want to say is um, I want you, everybody watching this live, to think, first of all, I want you to think about why did these five boys develop? I want you to sit and think about it, maybe write it down. So then we know that what habits that we need to, like I said, start shedding, right? Now I want you to write down what habits are you going to start implementing? What habits are you start, what hobbies are you going to start doing, right? How are you going to, um, if you're not, um, if you're not, if you're not, if you haven't found your purpose yet, you know, the thing about your purpose, it comes to you, but you have to, like I said, we're going to talk about that in the, uh, in the workshop as well. It comes to you when you, like I said, when you're not even trying to think, you know, when you're not even, um, thinking about it. However, your purpose comes to you when you're in tune with yourself. If you're not in tune with yourself, how are you going to hear those downloads, those messages coming from whether it doesn't matter what you believe, whether it's God, whether it's, you know, your intuition, you know, whatever higher power, whatever you believe in. Okay. Um, how are you going to hear that if you're not tuning into yourself, if you're just operating your life on autopilot, how? Okay. So, um, for ladies that's watching this, I want, you know, I want you to think about that. You know, how are you going to, like I said, design your life, you know, to be, like I said, more enjoyable to, you know, how are you going to design your life going into, we're in 2023 now, right? We're in a new year now. How are you going to design your life to, to also incorporate you, not just everybody else, yourself as well. How? Okay. So that's really, really important. That is how you begin your healing journey. Okay. We cannot heal when we're engaging in habits that's going to, like I said, become like, you know, um, that's going to make us sick, right? So very, very important, you know, very, very important, okay? So I say I like to say next week, the reset, your, the, we're having a three-day workshop on Zoom, reset your hormones, okay? Reset your hormones workshop. We're going to talk about all of these things I talk about today and also how to restore balance into your life, how to design your life to, to be, like I said, not just stress-free, but how to design a life that's going to help you balance your hormones, how to design your life to be happy, to be, you know, all um, to have, like I said, hormonal balance to restore health and happiness back into your life, right? Because if your hormones aren't in balance, you're not going to have help. It's also going to impact your mood. You're going to feel like you're all over the place, right? Very, very important, right, for your hormones to be in balance. That's how we start our healing journey, right? So I want you guys, to, if you're watching this, join the... Um, Sign up to be, to sign up for the three-day Research Your Hormones Workshop. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Shout out to the women that have already signed up. It's going to be, like I said, on Zoom. It's only $44, but for that $44, you're going to get a lot of value in that. Okay, it's going to go on from 6 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So very, very important. It's going to be an amazing workshop. I'm so excited for it. It's in one week, and the seats are filling up fast. So if you have not joined, go ahead and join, Okay. Um, I was on TikTok live earlier and they were actually joining as I was on live, which is so cool. Hi, I have to watch the replay. Hey, Roxana, congratulations on having your baby. Okay. Yes. The replay will be available in the group for 24 hours. Okay. So yes, you can watch the replay, but hi, thank you so much for watching. So ladies that are watching, thank you so much for watching. Um, maybe if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'm going to go back and answer the questions I didn't answer. And yes, congratulations. And, um, yeah, but if you have any questions about the um, about any of my programs, my courses, working with me, send me a DM. Okay, I would love to work with you. If you um, moving forward, if you want to do a, if you want to work with me one on one, if you want to work with me in my programs, I have programs, I have courses available. So if you want to work with me one on one on healing your body, shrinking your fibroids for sure, then definitely um, send me a message. Okay, feel free if you have any questions to jump in my DMs. Okay, I want to see all of you guys at the workshop. Cannot wait. Next week on 24th, click the link in my caption in order to sign up, okay? All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so like I said, watch, if you watch this, uh, if you're watching the, uh, this live, watch it again, okay? So it can really sink in. Watch it again before the 24 hours so it can really sink in, all right? I'll, and I'll talk to you guys later. So the next video training we're gonna have, it's gonna be in two weeks because next week is the, is the workshop, okay? So yeah, I have to think about the topic, okay? Because I know that we did a poll about the topics that you guys want to have. If you guys can think of a, you're welcome, hon. You're welcome, L. So happy you enjoyed this, um, this video training. If you guys have any topics that you want to learn more about, feel free to write a post in the group so we can vote. Feel free to send me a message, whatever you want to do, okay? All right, ladies. Love you guys. Have a beautiful rest of your week. 
I will see you at the workshop. So make sure you sign up, okay? Click the link in the caption and go ahead and sign up for my three-day research your hormones workshop. And that's pretty much it. Bye, everybody.